Welcome to Diplomatic Channel. I am Amarachi Ubani. Sunday marked 15 years since the infamous September 11 terrorist attacks on the United States. Almost 3,000 people died in the attacks when hijackers slammed airliners into New York's World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and the Pennsylvania field. It was one of the darkest days in U.S. history, and it changed the world's perception to terror, beginning a long, drawn-out war against al-Qaeda, yet to be ended despite the death of founding leader Osama bin Laden. While we're not going to relieve the events of the day, it is better to be conscious of the reality on the ground, that terrorism has multiplied through the existence of new groups, and we must be determined, as ever, to fight it. We'll be right back. South Korean authorities have indicated plans to annihilate Pyongyang if it shows any signs of mounting a nuclear attack. North Korea on Friday carried out what it said was its fifth and largest nuclear test. It said the test had been a nuclear warhead that has been standardized to be able to be mounted on strategic ballistic rockets. Estimates of the explosive yield of the latest blast have varied. South Korea's military said it was about 10 kilotones enough to make it the North's strongest nuclear test ever. Other experts say initial indications suggest 20 kilotones or more. The U.S., on the other hand, is considering imposing more sanctions on North Korea as it continues to present a growing threat to the region, to U.S. allies, and has promised that the U.S. will do everything possible to defend against the growing threat. Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan says it is a binding duty to ensure that Islamic State militants are unable to carry out actions in his country. His statement comes as the country conducts current operations in Syria, known as Operation Euphrates, which the President has described as the first step in the fight against the militant group. Syria is expected to begin observing a 10-day truce on Monday, followed by coordinated airstrikes against jihadist militants. The truce was agreed on Friday last week between the U.S. and Russia, an ally of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. President Erdogan said it was his duty to finish the IS in Syria and to bring them to a level where they cannot carry out more attacks against Turkey. Americans held services across the country, marking 15 years since the terror attacks on September 11th, President Barack Obama held a moment of silence at the White House at 8.46 local time, the time the first plane hit the World Trade Center. Six moments of silence were, however, held in New York City to mark the times four hijacked planes crashed into the two World Trade Center towers. Main presidential candidates Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump were at one of the ceremonies held at the rebuilt site. None made any comment. Nearly 3,000 people died in the attacks altogether. 15 of the attackers were Saudis. Years after an independent panel completed the 9-11 Commission report, one year after the attacks, the U.S. Congress unanimously passed a bill allowing victims' families to sue the Saudi government. An attack on a police station in Mombasa, Kenya has left the attackers, three road women, dead. The women had tricked their way into the station, carrying a knife and petrol bomb concealed in their traditional wee-wee robes. There, they stabbed one police officer and set the building ablaze with a petrol bomb before being shot dead. Police said they have leads that could help with the investigations. Though they did not say which group is under suspicion at this point, but it is believed the women pledged allegiance to Al-Shabaab. As a witness said, they repeatedly said they were Al-Shabaab and they recited the Arabic slogan. Finally, fighting has been reported in oil terminals held by allies of the UN-backed government in Libya. The oil wells were attacked by forces loyal to General Khalifa Haftar, a Libyan general, who said they took control of the Ras Lanuf and Sidra terminals. The general is one of the most powerful military figures in Libya. He does not recognize the authority of the UN-backed government of national accord in the capital, Tripoli, and is rather loyal to a rival government based in the eastern city of Tobruk. 
General Haftar leads the Libyan National Army, an umbrella group of army units and other forces loyal to them. Oil production has dropped in Libya to about 200,000 barrels per day from the 1.6 million barrels per day it was producing before the death of military dictator Muammar Gaddafi. There is still no figure on the number of those who died in the attack. The World Trade Center has been rebuilt and the 104-story building, also known as the Freedom Tower, is the tallest skyscraper in the Western Hemisphere. Five years after the attacks was when construction began. It was not until 2014, though, when it was opened to its first tenant, media company Condé Nast. At least 67% of the 3 million square feet has been leased. The U.S. government had been one of the first tenants of the original World Trade Center in the 1970s, but the federal government became the third tenant in the new building when the General Services Administration signed the lease on its behalf in 2012. Now, in his message to Americans on the anniversary of this year, U.S. President Barack Obama urged Americans to remain united in the face of terrorist attacks. We're still the America of heroes who ran into harm's way, of ordinary folks who took down the hijackers of families who turn their pain into hope. We are still the America that looks out for one another, bound by our shared belief that I am my brother's keeper, I am my sister's keeper. The president honored the memories of the victims of the attacks and reminded Americans who they are. In the face of terrorism, how we respond matters. We cannot give in to those who would divide us. We can't react in ways that erode the fabric of our society because it's our diversity, our welcoming of all talents, our treating of everybody fairly, no matter their race, gender, ethnicity, or faith, that's part of what makes our country great. It's what makes us resilient, and if we stay true to those values, we'll uphold the legacy of those we've lost and keep our nation strong and free. It's no news the rest of the world feels what happened on that day 15 years ago. And while it's hard to determine whether any Nigerians were victims of the attacks, we joined with the rest of the world to fight terror. I had a chat with U.S. expert Curtis Adiba on President Barack Obama's words on this memorable day. For someone who was not there when the attacks happened on September 11, 2001, what do you make of President Barack Obama's message to the American people? Well, I think the American people are united on one issue, the security of the homeland. It does not matter if Obama wasn't the president mm -hmm. at the time it happened. What is important is that he's not the president and he has that responsibility and duty to call for unity around this core issue. Don't forget that one of the first time in recent history of America that every American was on one page, mm -hmm. unity never seen before, was when America was attacked. Mm -hmm. 15 years ago. Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, Green Party members, they were all on one page on the need to secure America. So I think it's a message that Americans will receive well, considering the fact that every American has got this problem with the internal security right now, which is also an issue that is raging uh, highly among the presidential aspirants as far as American security is concerned. So it's a message well delivered. But do you think that Americans will draw comfort from those words that he, he, he gave in his statement? Oh, well, definitely, they will. Um, and especially because um, he, he started his speech by reading from his scripture, mm. which gave hope to a lot of Americans. Forget about the fact that there are people who are out there who believe that the president is a Muslim, but it's proven that every time he needs to give a national speech, especially one that calls on his, on his emotion, mm. like the one he did today. Mm. I mean, he, he spoke to all Americans, irrespective of political party leaning, irrespective of religion and all that. We are Americans, there's a need for us to come together. We need this unity to fight this common enemy. And I think that was a message we're delivered and we're taken by the American people. Terrorism in the United States. When we come back after the break, the discussion gets deeper. But I don't think having more arms gives us more security as we learn whether the world has become any safer 15 years on. Do stay with us.